Thank you, Tom, and uh, thanks to you and uh, Senator Leahy for all the great work that you do for FEMC. So I'm going to turn uh, the microphone over to uh, Jennifer Pontius right now. Um, as um, Nancy had said, that she's the principal investigator for FEMC and a researcher for the Forest Service and the Rubenstein School, and she's going to give us an overview of the plenary session this morning. Jen. Thank you. Great. So just to give you an idea of how the plenary is going to run so you can all be prepared, um, we're going to have each of our plenary speakers go for about 20 minutes. And there should be a little bit of time after each of those talks to ask questions. So let your brain juices be flowing and be ready because we'll have to sort of be quick. We'll have um, staff running through with microphones if you would like to ask those questions. But we will have to move on pretty quickly to the next speakers. So what that means is that we're going to try to come back at the very end for any sort of overflow or additional questions. But obviously, our uh, plenary speakers are going to be here all day. So obviously, feel free to, to seek them out. Great. That was a perfect amount of time to actually find my presentation. There we go. <laughs> So um, I, I volunteered to, as briefly as possible, try to summarize what we have learned about climate change over the past year, because this has been a year of really uh, of tremendous developments. So I'm going to guess that uh, many of you have probably heard about the fourth national climate assessment that came out the day after Thanksgiving, um, which is really a representation of how far climate science has advanced, particularly in respect to being able to downscale to sort of a finer spatial scale and understand what's happening um, across the globe and across the region, um, but also in terms of attribution science. So how can we figure out what's actually driving this climate change? So it's a, it's a tremendously large document that uh, I think most people, including many policymakers, have not had the time to read. Um, but I do suggest that you at least Google um, Fourth National Climate Assessment, and it takes you to a great interactive web page where you can dig much deeper than I'm going to be able to get here in the short time that I have allowed. Um, a second publication that came out this year from the U.S. Forest Service um, is also, I think, incredibly useful, particularly in terms of implications for forested ecosystems and what we might do to manage and mitigate those impacts. So again, if you just Google the U.S. Forest Service Climate Change Adaptation, they actually have um, an interactive story map that, again, can sort of give you the big pieces that I'm going to rush you through here. So I apologize um, in advance for that rush. Okay, so I believe firmly that a picture is worth a thousand words. And so what you see here is just a representation that Climate Central pulled together of NASA um, surface temperatures. And I think it tells a really interesting story visually of what we already know has been happening um, with climate across the globe. So each of these little words around the circle are different countries. They're grouped by continents and regions. And I think that what's most striking is what's happened in the past, say, three or four decades. Um, and then this, I think, just really captures some of the key findings that came out of that fourth national climate assessment. So just let it run again. Notice a lot of variability from year to year, very ability across the globe, but the long-term trend is kind of shocking. So the key findings from that national climate assessment is that we are still seeing, and, and we now can confirm with high um, confidence, that the changes we see are more rapid than have occurred ever throughout Earth's history. Um, that these trends are robust and confirmed by multiple lines of evidence, um, and that human influence is the predominant contributor to these changes. So these are some of the really big things that came out of this uh, particular assessment. Uh, what does that mean for our region? So sorry, just to, uh, to kind of summarize where I'm getting this information, this would be the U.S. Forest Service document. Um, the, if you see the NCA number four, that would be from uh, the National Climate Assessment. So specifically in New England, what have we seen? So this is, again, historical. No one can argue about this. Um, we know that we've seen a mean annual increase of 2.4 degrees over the past century, um, and that's even higher in winter months, although you wouldn't know it from this past week. Um, we also are seeing a slight trend towards greater precipitation, but really that's coming more as extreme events. And I think, again, this is something that we're all um, pretty aware of. Uh, if you think about this, though, it's not something that you can just summarize for all of New England, right? There are patterns. And I think this is why it's so important to dig into the data and go to these story maps, because what's happening for you in the Adirondacks may be very different what's, from what's happening in Massachusetts or southern Maine. Um, so again, I really do encourage you all to dig a little deeper, because I don't have the time to get to this. Um, 
One of the other really shocking things that I gleaned from reading the National Climate Assessment, because they do have chapters on all of the different regions across the country, so this was pulled specifically from what they reported for the Northeast, and this is a direct quote because I was so shocked I didn't dare to um, try to rearticulate this. So by 2035, that's not that far off. Let's think about that, 15, 16 years. Um, we expect there to be 3.6 degrees warmer um, annual temperature than what we uh, were accustomed to pre-industrial era. So this is, this is the part that made me uh, catch my breath, the largest increase across the country. So the Northeast will experience or has experienced the largest um, increase and that this is more than two decades before a similar milestone will be reached across the globe. So we really are in a region of tremendous change um, if we weren't already aware of that. Again, breaking this down through the, um, the U.S. Forest Service report, um, we can expect to continue to see, moving forward, increases in temperatures across all seasons, and we can expect an increase in extreme events, everything from heat waves to droughts, even cold waves, um, wind storms, floods. So yeah, good times. Um, <laughs> Also, uh, we do expect increases in precipitation, and the, the problem is that is not expected to be consistent across the seasons. So summer and fall, we may experience more droughts, but we um, will probably see increased precipitation during winter and spring, obviously more of this falling as rain than snow. So there will be impacts for snowfall and snowpack duration. Um, and then again, the extreme events are something that we really need to be preparing for, particularly as it comes to managing our forests. So that was hopefully short. <laughs> and again, I know I glossed over this, but I, I can't emphasize enough. There really is new science coming out that we all should make ourselves familiar with. So um, with that, hopefully I've set the stage for our plenary speakers and they can tell us all about the impacts and what we can do about it. And I'll try and find. Maybe, uh,